Hi folks, so we've joined our uh, Champions of Estrus uh, top 4 game between uh, Feuerbart and uh, Steven Batain. Uh, sorry for missing the setup, had uh, some connection problems. So, uh, surprise today, we have uh, Free Folk played against uh, Steven's uh, Battle of the Trident. I'm sure uh, Steven was expecting some kind of bestow deck again from uh, Hannes here. So going for the early pressure with uh, Vanquish the Unbelievers. And is there enough strength to win the military? There should be with stealth. And Steven can't successfully defend, so just uses the Desert Raider. Now it's not uh, killing off everything, so it's uh, going to be three claim after the agenda is uh, triggered. So it's the redesigned version of Free Folk, obviously, gives you additional claim for needing your faction card when you attack with a Wildling character. So, mostly you can get to 3 if you play the 2 claim plots. In the original version of this agenda, you could uh, play a 2 claim plot and then need a faction, uh, faction card to apply claim of another challenge. So, you did 2 uh, claim military, then uh, applied 2 claim military again on another challenge, which was quite devastating. And. Uh, we see Dorn in play for Steven, which is something I haven't seen with this deck before, and it should definitely help survive whatever um, pressure comes from the high claim of Free Folk, just by getting the cards back. Of course, you need economy as well to be able to play them, and that's currently a struggle for Steven. And now getting to claim Intrigue as well, and uh, one Tail Token on Torment. But let's see what happens with Steven's agenda, if anything. Reinforcements gives him another character. Ariane that was discarded for reserve and uh, she can uh, replace herself here. So, a power challenge and then chance to win dominance as well, which is uh, after all of that quite a decent round. Yeah, so starting with five uh, charts basically. Uh, in play to survive the three claim opening was uh, pretty good here for Steven. Gives him four power, still cards left in hand and a good board. And now Free Folk needs to do it all over again, I think. Now the strength is pretty big, of course, and uh, Desert Raider keeps coming back. Magnar of Ten on uh, Ygritte, so that's one we haven't seen a lot. Gives her the Lord Trait and Pillage, and the save effect. So pillage, not something you really want to do. Unless there is the uh, 
Um, what's the card that can uh, search for attachments after you pillage something with a wilding character? That's um, a possibility. And of course the Lord trait right, should not uh, do much here. Now let's see what this uh, plot deck is like. So yeah, it's um, presumably going to be the a pack of uh, two claim plots and then maybe something more normal. And Steven hits with heads on spikes. That's a very good one. And gets to be first player. Yeah, again, difficult to kill all of this off. Even if you can win the military challenge, so we have Tormund with one token now. That gives him or anyone plus two strength. He has Intimidate, which is not great when going second. And we have Draw and the card in Shadows with one gold remaining. Wildlings with Shadows I don't think exist. There is Old Build Bone as an option, which yeah, this deck heavily relies on needing the faction card, so it would be good. And the calculation currently, so if uh, both of these are still standing, they have 7 plus uh, Tormund's uh, action, so that's 9, and starting past a 4 strength character would be 9 against 9, so still in enough to win the military challenge. And I don't think there is Intimidate on Steven's side. Well, there isn't on the board, but I don't think he can uh, get it in play. But um, Firebart needs to leave the challenges unopposed for that, and just doing the three challenges here, of course, uh, there's a lot of power gained. And if there is Old Build Bone, I think. Um, He'll be needing the faction card pretty quickly. Yeah. Intrigue is the one that gets you an edict, which is the most versatile, including at Prince Duran's behest, so going into the Reclaimer before military challenge, possibly. Hollow Hill is knelt, that's uh, something good for Steven. And discarding the last of the giants, which uh, was not going to be used. Now in theory Ygritte could defend this and it would still be enough to get the military through, but no. Looks like Farbert will take the chance using a Dupes claim.
and this gives him a chance of pushing an additional challenge through. So with Intimidate, it's a chance to get two challenges, of course, something could be in hand that uh, messes up this plan. It probably isn't core are or Hotach, because the um, the other version might be used, and that's um, too expensive at this point, because the used plots uh, pile is pretty small. And just with the two claim forcing, basically, Ariane to do whatever she's going to do if um, something needs to come into play. Of course, that uh, risks discarding her for intrigue, which is not nice either. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, so bringing him in with Ariane and that. Um, what does that do? Not nothing as first player, unfortunately for Steven, so he can defend. And she survives. So question is whether that was the best choice. So three very strong cards in hand, as you can see Duran's game, which uh, with seven already could be a, a good closer. And then Lord Anders' host is an excellent card if you have the goal for it. And still enough strength remaining here to push the military challenge through. But not a bad uh, board here for Steven. He can take three claim. Just about. Gets an additional card. And I think the three kneeling characters possibly could be the ones that are chosen for claim here. And whatever pressure comes in the next few rounds, Desert Trader can absorb one claim all the time, of course, for the uh, for the um, price of prized. Now March would be pretty good, when you get to only two characters, March does a lot, of course it's only one claim then. And reinforcements has been used. Okay, you win or you die, refills the hand, and we have the warrior which is uh, gold with a uh, plot with decent gold. It can get you two claim, but it's unlikely. The seven character in Martel. So the um, poor fellows that we haven't seen in this game, uh, one in the dead pile actually, are s the seven characters, of course, and they are armies to trigger the agenda. Now the pressure is real because claim is 2 plus uh, the agenda trigger, so even with Desert Raider, Steven needs at least a couple of characters here, and then he exposes them to Intimidate as well. But at least this time there can't be any fake challenges because of the, um, the ability here, if uh, there is enough gold to put uh, Arihotach uh, into play again from hand. Hmm.
three characters with desert trader only one survives Distance Steven could use old build bone. I think it's more likely to be a wind blown or the tattered prince. So, any tricks? Probably just making the calculation what exactly will survive and what will be intimidated. So it should be whatever is left uh, on the board should be intimidated. Whatever he does here on defense. And five gold remaining. I wonder if the three cards are useless to him. They will be discarded for reserve. Or if there is a rogue wildling, which would be nice. Ambush five gets you to claim on another challenge, potentially. Okay, so... Something like a, a burning on the sand, something like that would be nice here. But if uh, Steven does have to absorb the three claim, that's uh, Desert Rider coming in, and then what do you keep? Probably Ariane. What icon does he take? Power would make sense. Since Steven is ahead, that's one thing in his favor at the moment. But then, if there is a rogue wilding in hand, it won't make any difference. the intrigue icon and now the rogue wilding is too expensive so there isn't one in hand because scaling the wall returns Dorn to hand hmm 
a duped location, so okay, if there's nothing in hand, you may as well play it, or maybe there is a plan to completely get rid of it, maybe within two challenges, and I think Steven possibly has a power icon in hand, that's why he took the, uh, the intrigue one, no, okay, so I was thinking, even though his board has been decimated, he has uh, a huge power advantage, but now with the two claim swing, not so much. Of course, he is second player, so whatever Dorn is drawing here should be something he can put into play. And the Desertrader coming back. So he can swing back. Unfortunately, doesn't have the seven character. <laughs> okay. Last of the giants into Rogue Wildings. It's the perfect to get rid of all of your cards for you win or you die and uh, maximum effect here. So going for the intrigue. And the standing character to defend power potentially. Depending on what comes in. Okay, that was pretty big here for Firebird. Now, is there a limit on Torment? So he can discard all of his tokens to basically defend whatever. But uh, the Intrigue icon is currently missing and no way to gain it. So let's see. That's the one that gets you an Edict. And I think. Just uh, behest into siege preparations wouldn't be too bad here. Refill the hand. Switching into desperate attack doesn't seem to work because uh, Dormund can defend with the rogue wilding against the military. Even if there is some additional strength somewhere. Then you have also Wildfire Assault, which needs to be triggered on the military. So that's the one I'm speculating uh, Steven cannot successfully win. Well, there is no hidden information here on the Firebird side, so Steven knows 
what he can do and what he can't do here, so the intrigue is one he can definitely push through. And the others he would need something in hand or shadows to get past Dormund's action. Now he can assault the Hollow Hill, which uh, is unlikely to matter with zero reserve. army or mercenary, so he can stand or build bone if he wants to return to shadows. But no. And here comes Behest into something else. I was thinking siege preparations could be wildfire assault. And it's desperate attack. <laughs> desperate attack on a challenge he doesn't seem to be able to, to push through, so he must have something still available in hand or shadows here. And then what does he do? Does he go for the military or does he go for the power? Military. One, cha one character with two strength. Obviously, Wildling will defend. Maybe a mission in Essos, in Shadows. So is this uh, um, a fake challenge to just to nail the, the standing character and then the power is the real one? Or does he have tricks to push this through? He goes for unopposed power with reclaim that's 11 and then wildfire could come in the plot phase instead. Okay, losing connection, so I do wonder what the plan is. Is it to win the military or is it to win the power challenge? Now military in theory kills of these three guys and it's Desert Raider and Wind blown against Ygrit and Tormund, but Steven has a hand advantage for the following round. And if it's the power challenge, he gets very close to victory, leaves uh, five characters still on the board, so it's kind of um, expected that he would then reveal Wildfire Assault, level things a little bit, and then he can try to push for the win and good chance of uh, winning initiative with that plot as well. 
I do not, not guarantee it does not beat uh, March to the wall, for instance. <laughs> yeah. Recording this on a PC here at home and uh, have uh, so many connection problems recently. Lucky to uh, be able to see most of this game. I just hope it uh, holds on until it's uh, finished. Okay, the moment of truth, let's see. It passes the action, so Firebird wins this one. And surely that means there is a way to push the power challenge through. And gets a card for Dorn in the process as well, which is nice. And it is a mission in Essos. So windblown replaced for poor fellows. And that should be an unopposed power challenge, getting him to 11. And uh, pressure on Feuerbart to give him another card now, because he is so close to victory with this. And now it becomes interesting. Four plots remaining. Siege preparations and wildfire assault for sure. Well, against me he had duel as well. And uh, march to the wall. And let's see if we have a fourth to claim plot here for Firebird. Hmm. Okay, and hurting himself a little bit with uh, the ability. Steven goes first. He has that wind blown still in hand, which is um, nice. It can be put into shadows for a surprise or just uh, on the board attack with poor fellows and uh, threaten standing it, which forces basically Firebird to over defend everything because uh, the score is uh, getting dangerous. Not much unique stuff here, so you don't really care that much about the, the dead pile, so Ario Hotoh is dead and uh, Ariana is um, still in hand. Umbara, you see, another unique one and a unique army. Tethered Prince for sure as well. So Ariana comes into play and just uh, a King's Road which uh, doesn't immediately help Hannes here, so he needs to survive the round to make use of that, and uh, 
I'm afraid the hollow hill will be assaulted. Okay, the, the one thing is that there is no stealth, so doesn't seem to be any way of uh, winning challenges past um, this Stormont's action, which can uh, increase strength by 6. So far, but uh, might be able to defend them. At least the ones that matter, you can uh, let the intrigue go. And you need to keep an eye on this as well, of course. So, Edict for an intrigue challenge that could go into marched. Siege plot on the power challenge could be siege preparations and uh, against me there was duel, that's a, a war I think. But it's possible that uh, he changed the plot deck of course, expecting a different matchup here. Just doing the challenges that kneel out defenders. And they feed Dorn as well in the process. Torment hasn't been used yet, not even once. So there is the other part of this um, action gives uh, renown to characters. So if he'd uh, used that earlier, for instance, with three additional power, could be uh, up to eight, which uh, doesn't seem to make that much difference. So it makes sense to leave it for when you really need it. And he will need it probably to defend the power challenge. Risky to leave it, but I guess it is possible. I think uh, the threat is only siege preparations, which with so many cards in hand is uh, useless. And if Rihanna cannot replace herself into something really uh, impactful, then uh, getting the two claim back with uh, early frost could be the better deal. But then what do you do if she replaces herself with Windblown and uh, threatens March to the wall? Then that's one you need to defend properly. Just defending. Ygrid has the chance of doing military successfully. 
killing off the board with three claim, but uh, I think it's a little bit too late for that now because uh, seven cards in hand. That gets you another round, but um, for instance, a march to the wall, and then uh, Steven replays his uh, cards, and you are top decking. Escape surely. Hmm, escapes in a different way. The Iron Bank will have its due. And nothing gets put into play because claim should be three. for Elia or anything annoying like that and uh, that gives dominance to Steven gets him within yeah possibly one challenge of victory Hollow Hill still standing so that's decent enough that's an extra character Worst case, march to the wall coming, so that's um, still two big characters and another one coming in. Uh, so was there... Uh, was it a good decision to push that military through? Is there still a chance to turn the game around that way? Is the question. So with uh, eight cards in hand, normally I would say no chance, but uh, only two economy locations, so march to the wall gives you six gold. Make that five gold potentially. But maybe you discard door now that it's uh, served its purpose. And selecting Steven to go first, which is slightly dangerous if he can push a uh, power challenge through. But of course, uh, letting him go second is. Uh, equally unpleasant because he has stuff that uh, comes through shadows Yeah, difficult. Wind blown in shadows, for instance, is uh, an investment for the future. Ariane can come into play. She is still in hand. Do her challenge, replace herself, even if uh, nothing successfully gets pushed through. Only 
one claim this time, so he could even just uh, bring out a few small characters. Okay, there she is. And using the King's Road, so the last remaining card might be something he can use. Otherwise he would probably have just marshaled it. And let's see what uh, Warmer Six Kings does here. Goes for plus strength and intimidate now. Cat, so that's a power icon and stealth. And now that Steven gets first, of course, he has uh, this annoying card as well. That's the trader works on uh, attack. So if he does a challenge, forces. Firebar to defend, he then brings Desert Trader into play and takes an additional icon away. Okay, manually getting strength and the icon, but how do you give him the cat trait? <laughs> no. Thirteen six, but uh, very important stage of the game. Firebird has the board advantage and uh, the threat of uh, turning the game around. He doesn't need the, to claim military anymore, so he can use the agenda on the power challenge if he can. And Steven close to winning, and uh, Firebird needs to stop all of his tricks here. And another interesting situation, both players down to the last two plots, so getting stuck with plots they don't really want here. I'm sure Siege Preparations is still available for Steven, so that's one that uh, will do very little for him. Especially if he has to reveal it in the plot phase, because it has such low gold. And Firebart can only guess what his last two plots are. There could be still uh, an omen plot, Morgulis or the Harris, or there could be first snow, which for him is not that great because uh, Steven jumps characters into play all the time. And here is where you're kind of stuck with defending everything because uh, it's 13 power and does not. Defend this one, which uh, 
loses him the card from hand, but at least the Asset Rider stays in the dead pile for now. Five cost characters, so four remaining couldn't quite play it. I wonder why he used the King's Road, maybe. He thinks the uh, dominance calculation will be important. And here comes the power icon. Military, in fact. to do. Okay, just a second. Okay, sorry about that, so what did I miss? So defending this one but letting it go through anyway. And you get it saved. Okay, that was slightly unusual there. Losing an additional character and spending one on defense. And now he has to do the power run, of course, and uh, increase the claim. And still wins dominance even with uh, Desert Raider coming into play. And there is Intimidate anyway for Desert Raider. So not used. And suddenly Forward himself is close to victory here. And still he has the standing hollow hill. And now the plot game super important so siege preparations has zero initiative and very poor gold so we'll see the other one could be dual which of course has good initiative and what could be the plan here so a uh, march we haven't seen yet for firebart and uh, i'm guessing there could be an omen or a, or a first snow as well in the deck has recovered with the economy a little bit so should be more resistance next round And there we are, it's uh, in fact the Harris. Which completely fizzles after all of the military claim on both sides of the board throughout the game. And of course the previous wildfire. 
and uh, now forward goes first. Ten is not quite enough, so power challenge with two claim and renown is thirteen, but other power icons with uh, Tormund's ability could be enough. What did he take for Hollow Hill? Another Baramir six skins. So he can get the power icon and stealth. Unfortunately, that's uh, the only thing he has, so if they do military together, they can get 3 renown from that, and that would be 13, so still not quite enough. This is one moment in the game where the used pile is huge, 8 plots. So anything that works with that, like uh, Princess Plan, would be very strong. But I don't think Steven's deck really does that kind of thing. It's not trying to get the, the huge number of plots here. We did see Duran's game discarded earlier though. So that should be enough to win the game in any round basically now because it's already 12. Again, difficult call for Steven. And this time doesn't even have perfect information because there's two cards in hand. And we saw earlier that two cards, cards can be enough, so it was last of the giants into a, a rogue wildling. That uh, combination could be pretty good again, or off to guard down here is not bad either. Well, in any case, it's um, pretty impressive for Steven to play this deck comparatively, and uh, whatever happens here, uh, get on the verge of winning, uh, whether he uh, gets over the line or not, uh, against basically, in this uh, competition where you can uh, uh, choose decks between rounds and uh, Everyone pretty much knows that Steven will play this, and uh, I assume Free Folk was uh, picked as a favorable matchup here. And still, it's uh, very sturdy, very reliable. The Martel Battle of the Trident, even in this situation. 
basically dominating the game right from the start and even playing with uh, very few characters on the board against uh, free folk still doing pretty well. Okay, uh, begging brother costly and he does bestow two on it so that uh, could be for the Varamir action and then one left. That's one of the four torment triggers. He doesn't have a limit so not that useful and a wind blown as well which can stand a warrior sons. And with Doheris uh, being a one claim plot, it's not possible to kill off everything. Uh, this time, and even with Intimidate, not quite enough because there is Desert Raider. Okay, so let's say Tormund wins this one. That would be 12 if the agenda is used. He can get uh, Renown on him, which would be 13. And if it's unopposed, it would be 14. And then he can give Renown to the military icons. So Steven next needs to make the calculation to survive this one. He can defend with 8. Which means Torment needs to trigger twice. And then if one is cancelled, needs to trigger three times. And that leaves him one more trigger for the third challenge, which Seems like it's still enough for uh, Firebird to win the game, possibly. Unfortunately, the connection problems uh, come at the wrong time here, so the scenario that I just described uh, does play out, but... Uh, Unfortunately, we cannot follow it step by step. It would just be a, a few minutes of uh, me trying to reconnect uh, rather unsuccessfully to uh, the game again. Yeah, but uh, I can uh, show you the log. So as you can see, uh, Tormund triggers uh, so that he can push the power challenge through with the agenda as well, which gives to claim. And then even though Desert Raider can come into play and take Ygritte's uh, Intrigue icon, the two Renown can still be given by Tormund uh, on the military challenge. No more be begging brother and uh, he didn't have enough gold anyway, so that's enough to push the military challenge through with two Renown and that gets uh, Firebart to 15 for a great win in a very close game. Could have gone either way this one, but uh, just did enough to use his agenda uh, very nicely on the military challenge when he needed to, and then on the power when uh, it was time to win the game, and uh, saving those Tormund triggers for the very end when it was really important. So very nicely done by Firebart. So that was uh, the top four, which means Firebart is our first uh, finalist in this uh, tournament and he plays uh, the winner of the other semi-final between Radek and Viktor so with Viktor Martel seems like uh, the likely affection but with Radek he swaps decks quite a bit so it's uh, always difficult to predict what uh, exactly he will play 
uh, that game uh, unfortunately we cannot show you but uh, we'll uh, be back with the final so thanks for joining us this time and uh, see you next time